Good afternoon. I, I was gristling a little bit when Lowell said health sector because I, I actually believe that um, the medical care piece is um, separate and sometimes plays very much apart from the overall piece. But then when he used the term medical industrial complex, I sort of calmed down a little bit. Um, systems thinking, I think, is going to be the theme of, of my comments. Um, and, and back to, uh, we do need to be thinking and talking about a health system where all of the elements that we talked about earlier, early childhood education, schools, the workplace, um, as well as the health care or medical care delivery system sector are all part of the health system. Um, I do think that the medical care system or the medical care sector wants to do the right thing. I get the sense that docs want to do the right thing. They are looking for guidance. Uh, they don't necessarily know what to do, and they don't necessarily know where to look, despite the fact that for a number of years, the American Academy of Pediatrics has had diagnosis, prevention, and treatment guidelines out there. Uh, the American Academy of Family Physicians has put together a monograph on how to treat um, obesity. And I'm going to talk for a second about some new uh, American Heart Association guidelines on obesity treatment and also lifestyle modification. Before I do, I think it's important um, as we have the conversation, I think there's a theme that um, was uh, kind of a between the lines theme, and that is that the healthcare sector, the medical care sector, hospitals, clinics, and health plans actually play many, many roles in the communities and in the settings that they're in. Um, they are medical care providers, um, health educators, they're employers, they're sometimes payers, um, even the big health systems are both payers and employers. Um, they, are, uh, they, they are or can be at advocates for evidence-based change, and I'll talk a little bit about that. They can play a role in the research world. Uh, they are business sector members, and they are sometimes philanthropers. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm, gonna, I'm going with it. Um, so clinical guidelines, in November, uh, just uh, this past November, the American Heart Association, the American uh, College of Cardiology, and uh, the Obesity Society released a joint uh, guideline on obesity treatment. The American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology released um, a lifestyle modification guideline. Um, I'll let you uh, seek those, and I won't spend a lot of time talking about them. I'm going to spend the balance of my time talking about the two opportunities. Um, I think one, uh, and this is going to be focused in the clinical setting, a systems approach to prevent, treat obesity in the clinical setting. Um, and this is based slash inspired by the Kaiser Permanente Blood Pressure Control Initiative that's described in, I think, the August 20 issue of JAMA this year. Um, and I've added a few elements, but these are some essential elements that go beyond just the standard um, sorts of things that, that, that we've heard and actually build on comments that have been made by both Don and Lowell. One is um, an assessment and or teaching, uh, I mean, technical assistance of the practice um, itself. What is the capacity to do this which we are talking about? It's not enough to say people ought to do the right thing. Can they actually do it? And do they have the, the elements, the pieces, the, the mindset to get it done? Two, regis a registry, an overweight and obesity registry of patients. Three, a set of guidelines. They need to be simple because they get too, if they're too complicated, it just uh, paralyzes rather than, um, rather than potentiates. Um, four, data metrics reports to the team um, by the provider team, by the, oh, the bigger practice, it might be multiple providers, and by the system, including adherence to guidelines. Um, five, the notion of an expanded health team, dietitians, health coaches, social workers, uh, medical assistants, perhaps in clinical settings that are doing some things that they may not be doing now, and um, the one innovation in my mind, using community health workers um, as outreach and connections into the community. Um, six, physician training um, and engagement in advocacy around evidence-based community intervention. So it's not enough to know what to do in the clinic setting. Understand what can make a difference in the communities and the places where your patients live. 
Number two is um, the, the second innovation is uh, reimbursement reform uh, that might be led by Medicare, Medicaid, and CHIP, um, but should could include other payers and nonprofit hospitals that do a couple of things. One, help to support, number one, that systems change that I talked about. It's easy to talk about, maybe. It's, it takes some resources to implement, and one of the things not written about in the Kaiser Permanente article is that there was some resource allocation to make things happen that resulted in a very, very substantial improvement in blood pressure control uh, for uh, a number of patients in the Kaiser Permanente system. Uh, but number two, to pay for those evidence-based, community-integrated, family-centered interventions that might be um, modeled on or based on one, uh, the, y, the, the YMCA Diabetes Prevention Program. Uh, why do I mention the why? Because while the Diabetes Prevention Program is evidence-based, um, the why provides a standard large footprint approach that can touch many, many, many communities fa fairly quickly. Um, and then that's for adults. And for kids, there's a program, MEND, also science-based out of the UK. You can use a similar sort of already existing infrastructure to make things happen. Um, I think the last element of that would be research and evaluation to measure outcomes, to measure costs, to make improvements. Um, and one little thing I drew was an arrow that connected the two back to the point that you made, Lowell. This would provide a clinical to community linkage, uh, which is part of how we begin not only talking about health system being medical care and other things, but actually making it happen. Thank you. Thank you, um, Don and Lowell and Eduardo. I think that this session this afternoon has been really exciting, and to see the integration that could occur across all of these um, sectors is really promising. I wanted to, before we take a break, to thank all of the presenters from this afternoon who have shared their expertise and their experiences and really have identified strategies and models that really could be transformative um, and breakthrough opportunities that really could make a difference in this country. Um, now we're gonna have a 15 minute break. And again, the presenters, I would ask if they could stay around since we didn't have a lot of time for um, engagement with the audience and with each other. And um, after the break, we'll convene at 3.20, and Russ Pate from the University of South Carolina, who's the co-vice chair of the roundtable, will moderate the rest of today's sessions. Thank you.